Welcome. Great to see everybody here. I know it's just because of the people here who are presenting. The food has nothing to do with it. But um, welcome, and please feel free to keep eating food, do whatever you need to do. But um, we want to make sure we um, give plenty of time for questions and stuff, so the comments will be fairly brief. Um, I know if there's a lot of you in here who have gone on the mission before, so we're going to ask you at certain periods of time you can interject some comments, positive only. Okay. But um, anyway, I wanted to introduce, uh, I'm, I'm Tim Dutra with, um, I'm faculty at CSPM, our podiatry program here. Uh, we've been doing the medical mission for quite a while. I've been involved the last five years when I, when I started full time here. Uh, the last five years we've gone down to San Isidro, which is just across, it's on the U.S. side, below San Diego, across from the Tijuana border, which is the busiest, um, I think, border crossing in the U.S., I'm pretty sure. We see plenty. So, that's what we've been doing, uh, and it's really grown. I remember my first year involved, uh, I think we had maybe 12 to 15 students go down. I think last year we had like 500 or how many? We had a lot go down. I mean, it's, and I feel like you know it's hard being a chaperone and like a father goose or something. So it's not quite that bad. But um, you know, it's really expanded. And one of our goals is to maximize the student clinical experience. So you know, we want to balance that. So today, what we do is kind of give a presentation of kind of what we've been doing. And then any, anybody who's kind of interested in possibly doing the mission, feel free to talk to us. We have applications coming out. Um, and you guys will probably cover some of that. But in, in I think the deadline's going to be about a month. Um, the site is still not for sure, for sure the same site. We're, looking, we're, we're always looking at the best possible site. Okay, so just, just, you know, just so you know. We try to make it a good experience um, with the different classes, first, second, third, and fourth year. And then we've also had the FNP program, so Cynthia's going to talk a little bit about that, her experiences. FNP program has been with the last, uh, since I've been involved, last five years. Um, so it's been really fun to interact and network with them. I think, I think they get a lot out of it. Cynthia will tell you the truth. So, um, so that being said, um, it's a great experience. Really, it is student run. They're going to talk about it. It is student run, which I love. Why? They just tell me where to go, and depending on what they say, sometimes I listen. But uh, so it's nice. The students organize it. But what that means is the student coordinators. We're going to introduce in a minute. They have a lot of responsibility, so it really means having different teams helping out as much as possible. That's why when you go on the mission, it's really satisfying because not only are you getting clinical experience, but you're actually helping organize something, uh, which I think is a great experience. And it's really. Um, what you put into is what you get out of it. I'm, I can safely say I think the majority of our uh, students in the past who have gone, which is, I think counting all the years has been over 100 different students now, uh, I think they've all had really good experiences. And I think those of our students who have gone more than once, I always remind them that every year is different. So don't get, you know, like, oh, this was not as good last year, this was better than last year. It's always a different experience. And the thing is, I think each year, you're in school and get more training, more knowledge, I think it's probably a different experience. I think when you're first year student, it's great because you get to touch people and actually start doing things on them that are, I hope, are medically safe and necessary, okay? Um, you know, by the time you're a fourth year, you're actually helping us as actually like an attending. I mean, I mean, we give you a lot of responsibility. So I think it's good. The one thing we don't do, though, I hope, is we don't throw you to the wolves and say, well, here, you know, take care of this person. Well, I don't, I don't know which I do first. So we try to prep you, we try to give you a little bit of orientation, especially the first years coming in, like how to work up patients, how to kind of react. Um, I think there's always the language and cultural aspects, which is very beneficial. And the one thing we really try to promote, I think, in all of our um, professions here at SMU is that interdisciplinary type of thing and also the community service um, angle. I think it's very important that you realize that not all your patients are going to be insurance or cash paying patients. There's, there, there's a lot of underserved populations out there. The sooner you understand that and realize that, the better. And I, I'm a strong proponent that all is a portion of your practice. Your practice lifetime should be, I think, doing things um, for those who are less fortunate. So you should, I think that's a really important concept as a student. If you, and most of you already know that. I mean, I'm preaching to the choir probably. 
but it's really, really important that you understand that's a really important part of our experience, uh, both as a student, resident, and in practice. And I know when I was in school, just real quick, way back in the dark ages, we used to do um, the Baja Cripple Children Project, which was in uh, Tijuana and Mexicali. Fantastic experience. I loved them. My Spanish hasn't really gotten me better, but I think it was just a great experience. And so that's, that's what we're hoping for. I think there's a lot of potential at SMU to do um, more community outreach programs, local as well as a way, you know, we have some people say, well, why aren't you doing more stuff local? Well, we should be, and, and we are. We are getting involved with that. But also the experience of actually getting away from our area is also nice because I think most of our students will agree that, especially the first and second years, they love the experience to network with the third and fourth year students, learn more about different programs, externships, clinics, experience. So I think it's a really good thing. Remember, all of you uh, in your programs, your colleagues, you're going to be working probably a good chance for staying, for instance, in the state of California. I know I still see many of my classmates. They're still alive. They're still going. Um, <laughs> all of some of my wonder. But, uh, no, it's great because you kind of build this uh, collegiality. Okay. And I think it's a good thing. Anyway, I promised I'd be short, and I am. I'm only 5'10", so that's it. Uh, Andre, do you want to be introduced to all of you as anything? So I'm standing in for Dee Dee Hanson, Diane Hanson, who runs all of these events. And uh, she couldn't be here today, so she asked me to come in and facilitate. So I handed out all of the uh, evaluation sheets, so make sure you complete those when you're done. And that's about it. Well, what I meant, though, is we're also, we're also faculty advisor for? For the SNAP month. Okay. Which is? Student National Podiatric Medical Association. And one of our goals with that is? Diversity and Community Health. Right, so, uh, no, so this is really important you, because, because the one thing we are trying to do is do more community type service. So I mean, that's, that's, that's I mean, I didn't want to put you on the spot, but I want to make sure people realize that. Thank you, Andre. Andre's great at helping out um, pretty much anything we need to do, so thank you, Andre. And Gina, do you want to introduce yourself real quick? And why are you here? And I know why, but. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Gina Kea and I work in the development office and my role with your medical mission is um, I take care of processing any contributions that you get towards your trip. Any fundraising that you do, I process the funds for you. We have a special fund that we established many years ago just for this event. And I work with your student coordinators. Any expenses that come up, I work closely with them um, to make sure you have enough funds in there to pay for things. The more fundraising you can do, I know that um, like bake sales are great to do here on campus. We've had different groups in the past who've done bake sales. They've raised four or five hundred dollars. Um, doing that, and that money will all go towards your medical mission to help pay maybe airline tickets, maybe your hotel room, meals. Um, if you don't do fundraising, then there's no money there to help with that. So anything you get um, from family members, anybody, any funds at all, if you could just turn it in to your student coordinators, and they'll stop by my office, they'll turn it in to me, and I'll get it processed. If anyone uh, makes a donation, we do send them an acknowledgement letter, um, so they have it for their income taxes, so they can use it as a write-off also. Okay? And if you have any questions ever about money issues, if you could send your emails to your student coordinators, and I'll meet with them, and we'll figure it out to get an answer for you. And please copy me if you can, too. Just yes, so and Dr. Dutra. But I just want to acknowledge Gina. Thank you. Gina's been working with me since I've been here on this, so you, you've yeah. gone the five years also. And, mm -hmm. and the one thing I think we can say is we always need funds. Why? Because even though you guys have deep pockets and don't pay much for tuition, right, <laughs> and you have all this money you want to spend, we really want it to be as painless as possible. We want you, you know, our goal is to cover everybody who goes as much as possible. Wouldn't that be wonderful? That's really our goal. Be creative. Be thoughtful about different ways. It's never too early to fundraise. Never, never, never too early. 
Um, corporate sponsors, uh, those of you who come to some of our society meetings, and, and those of you who have you know, Alameda Casa Costa, we usually have you give presentations and, and little spiels to our group. Uh, there, there's a, almost any of our um, pharmaceutical reps in that, we always try to at least talk to them. Lots of times I'll kind of be a contact person, but they want to hear from students. They love when a student comes to them and says, hey, can you help contribute to our medical mission versus be asking them. Okay. So anyway, think about any contacts you have, um, any rich family friends, no, any, <laughs> anybody around that you think would be good, um, super. And it's not just financial, sometimes it's supplies, any services they can do, that's all good. But I just wanted to make sure you saw Gina, you recognize her, she is a key contact, she's been very helpful, thank you so much, unbelievable. Someday maybe she can come with us too, wouldn't that be cool? Um, but funds are really, really important, especially since we're getting so big now. Okay, because we need to get our own uh, jet, and bus, and all that stuff pretty soon. Clinic, so you know. Okay, also, but thank. You. Also, what Dr. Dutra said too about uh, medical supplies, anything you can get donated, uh, tangible items. Also, if you go through your student coordinators, let them know what you got and have your donor place a value on their gift. And I will go ahead and book that donation and also send them a letter uh, for tax purposes. We've got a lot of <coughs> medical supply companies. They might donate $1,000 in supplies and we send them a thank you letter. They get credit for that gift also. So any kind of donation helps. And no amount is ever too small. It all adds up in the end. That's right. So I always put down for me is I'm priceless. That's all I put down because I can't come up with a figure. Yeah. But, that, but it is important to do that. And the other thing is any of our supplies we have extra, we always utilize for other community things. We have, a, we have a suitcase clinic now in Berkeley. We have other outreach programs. So again, we try to utilize as much of that contact as we can. Because you know what, if you're a company giving us supplies, I think you would really be pleased if we use them all up, right? Because you know, at least they're useful for things. So again, we'll try to utilize things if we have any extra stuff. There's certain things that go really fast in our mission, like any of our um, diabetic shoes, you know, custom type shoes. Pre, I, I'll call them pre-custom because we don't make them custom. But um, a lot of our inserts, a lot of things, they just go like that, sandals, you know, like that. So everyone appreciates what we can get. But thank you, Gina. Thank you. Okay, I promised I'd keep it short. So now we have to turn it over to Lacey, Megan, and Cynthia. They're all up here. Um, and by the way, so Lacey, Beth, and Megan are, are obviously our third year podiatric um, coordinators. They've been, you've been involved since the first year with this. Um, Cynthia is really our FNP. I'm going to call her our student coordinator for that part because she's going to be instrumental in kind of filling in with the, her experience, so I'm going to go you guys. Okay. Um, so actually, I'm going to go back to this picture really fast. So basically, uh, last year's trip, we kind of catered our student and uh, faculty population to the clinic that we were um, attending. So the people that you see up here, there's actually about five or six more that actually went on the trip that weren't pictured because they were seeing patients at that time. But just to give you kind of an overview of uh, who came on the trip. So last year we had just under 50 people. I think it was like 48. Uh, we had the majority of which were uh, podiatric medical students. So first year, second year, third year. And then we also had seven fourth years join us last year, which was really amazing. Um, just to touch on that, we work as a team on the medical mission. So uh, we, have, we try to have a first year, a second year, a third year, and then a fourth year all um, kind of working with one, maybe two patients, but that's that's the objective here. So, you know, first year students, we're really um, helping you through the process of working out the patient. So it's, it's not a daunting process. We're not trying to pimp you. We're not trying to do any of that. We're really trying to just make it a comfortable learning environment. And I think it was really fun to have seven fourth years last year because like Dr. Drinker said, they, they kind of were acting as attending physicians. So in addition to the students, we also had three attending podiatric physicians, uh, Dr. Prasad, some of you might know, Dr. Miller, and of course, Dr. Dutra. And then uh, we also had seven uh, nurse practitioner students and one um, uh, nurse practitioner uh, attending on the trip. So we had quite a variety of big full house 
But um, again, what is, what is our goal of the medical mission? It's to serve the people of a needing community. So we chose San Ysidro, like Dr. Dutra said, we've been going there for the last um, eight years, and we worked in a community center that converts to being a church on Sundays. It's kind of a two-room um, building. Uh, the community there is so grateful to have us, and uh, we look forward to going every, there every year, but Megan will touch on kind of what we're thinking about for this year. Um, so, kind of the goals of the medical mission, of course, to provide health care to the deserving community, but again, it's to increase our clinical experience as students. Um, it's that, like he said, the congeniality, that camaraderie that we're building with all of the, um, with the classes of students, and I can't tell you how many friends each of us has made um, that we would not normally have met just in the walls of the school based on the community outreach programs that we're doing here. So again, talking about the clinic, uh, what did we do there? Who did we see? So the majority of our patients were Spanish-speaking, and based off that, we ended up taking two medical translators with us on the trip, uh, one of which was a wife of one of the students who uh, was fluent in Spanish, and the second one also happens to work at Highland Hospital um, as a medical assistant. So it was really great to have those people there. Um, Depending on where we go this year, we may or may not need translators, so um, keep that in mind. But what did we do at the clinic? So uh, we did very minor procedures. We did a lot of diabetic foot checks, uh, health screenings, uh, biomechanical evals. We were able to see some pediatric patients. So uh, patients, the moms would come in and they had three or four children and we were able to evaluate all of them. Uh, we had some nice shoes that we were able to give away to uh, deserving families. So all in all, it's a really great atmosphere for education, both the students and the patients. So I'm going to have um, Cynthia talk about kind of her experience as uh, a nurse practitioner student in the clinic. Hi everyone. Um, so I had the pleasure of um, joining last year's group uh, to San Isidro, um, and as an FMP student, um, it was it was wonderful. Um, Dr. Dutra talked about being able to work and collaborate uh, with other fields, and I think that's really stressed in our programs, at least in our cities. And so it was really nice for FMP students to be able to also collaborate with the podiatry students. Um, podiatry had a, a station set up uh, where if you were in if you weren't with patients, you were in the second room kind of receiving some type of training or instruction. So for FMP students, it was really nice to also take part of that and, um, and learn from the attendings, learn from the students. Uh, for FMPs, uh, the way that it worked for us, we have uh, one faculty that joined us, her name is Valerie, um, and she's basically our attending. So we had our, we had our station where um, everybody who comes in really, we welcome them, we do an intake, um, get their chief complaint, do a very quick medical history, uh, physical exam, depending on what is it that they need. And um, we, everybody got a, a blood glucose screening, a high uh, blood pressure screening. And, um, and then we were able to uh, pass them on to podiatry. Uh, be able to talk to the, the podiatry group that was taking them on, like letting them know this is uh, some of the vital information that we got from them and being able to have that communication. So that was, that was really great. Um, also, um, this is more an FMP portion. I think it was, uh, it was, we had the opportunity for, you know, as an FMP experience, to also do a lot of um, uh, patient education, a lot of health promotion. Uh, I, was, I was actually very surprised, because um, I thought it was, it was my first time going, so I, I thought it was going to be very, dietary base, but it was really crazy to see how many people actually showed up and had, we had one lady who came in with a blood glucose of like 400, um, and you know, people coming in with uncontrolled, you know, hypertension. And the really nice thing that I thought for FMP students was that because we have our attending there, um, it was really nice to be able to present to her and then uh, be able to provide treatment. So we were able to get um, uh, treatment, provide medications. Um, provide education, um, so that was really great. Um, and because I'm sure you guys will talk a little bit more about it, uh, we have um, was it Carlos, the mm -hmm. main the, the director there. So as FMP students, we also got, got to do a little bit of case management. Um, 
because one of the things that you know that was very noticeable is the fragmented care that they get in terms of uh, people who are diabetic or hypertensive. Uh, because the border is right there, it's really easy for patients to cross the border, get their medications and pharmacies um, in TJ. Uh, it's much cheaper, uh, but then you run into the problems uh, where uh, they run out of medications and then you know they just stop taking them until they're able to go back. There's nobody on the U.S. side of the border to manage their care. Uh, so you know we came across that a lot, and so it was really interesting adding to FMP experience to be able to work with Carlos um, and being able to set a referral to have them either apply for Cover California, which we did with one patient um, last year, and um, try to get something more stable uh, for them. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was really fun. I think, I mean, it was seven of us last year. I'm not really sure our numbers yet for this year. Uh, but it was really fun to meet uh, and work with the doctor students, with Dr. Dutra and Dr. Miller, and, um, and, and kind of have that So just to show everybody uh, some photos from last year, we've got two slides of this. Uh, kind of to touch on what Cynthia said, so we had one room that was a treatment-based room um, to see patients. The other room that we have was kind of like our home base, but when we weren't, when students weren't seeing patients, we made sure that they still had an educational experience. And so at this time, we were able on the right, you can see Stephanie and Ashley there learning how to hand tie. Um, surgical hand tying is so important in your third year in your general surgery rotation. So uh, we had, that was one of our goals for last year was to provide more, um, not just patient educational experiences, but uh, student educational experiences. So we brought hand tie material, um, the fourth year's made a Jeopardy game based off podiatric uh, questions that they were receiving um, throughout their fourth year on different clerkships. Uh, we had um, felt, we had taping for biomechanical. We had um, the fake feet from Sim Lab that we were practicing injections on. So when you weren't seeing patients, you still had a really great experience. And here's some more photos, uh, more patient care related. Sorry, we didn't get consents from everybody on uh, student lives. Uh, sorry, sir. I'm not sure but we were here with that. Um, but anyway, just to kind of reiterate that it is a three-day trip of pure education and um, I can't stress enough how fun the trip is if you make it fun so you know like I said we had fourth years there that um, we're going to keep in contact with now third years that we all all the third years this year are probably talking to you about clerkships so it's really great networking uh, ability for you if you come on the mission this year so now Megan's going to talk about next year's mission Okay, so the 2015 medical mission, um, as of right now, we are not going back to San Ysidro, California. It's not because we don't love that community, it's not because we don't want to, we don't love serving the patient population, but it's because we have 2015 goals that we want to try to achieve, and to, in, the, in order for us to achieve these goals, we do have to change locations. So part of these goals, we want clinic rooms. So right now, at San Ysidro, we have kind of a room that looks just like this with nothing inside but chairs. So we would like to try a more clinical facility we also want a larger space to accommodate more students, more faculty members, more patients. And of course, a new underserved, but a very deserving location and patient population. So the trip will be over spring break. Uh, first year, I know your white coat ceremony is Friday but before spring break, and then the trip will be that following week. Right now, tentative, it's going to be at the 11th through the 14th. That's very tentative. Uh, due to the fact that we are not 100% sure where we want to go for our location. So it will be West Coast. We have been in contact with many different clinics along the entire West Coast. Um, we are not going to go blindly into a new clinic. Myself and Lacey are flying to go look at different clinics, um, not this weekend, but next, week, next weekend, to kind of see the space, the faculty there, the facility. Uh, we do have to work out a new contract because to go out of state, it's a lot harder to go out of state and get a contract approved by SMU than to go in state. So it's a little bit messier, but we are very excited about the future as far as that. As far as requirements, so uh, Miss Erica Lewis, who, if you guys don't know, she's in the CSPM office when you walk in through the right, uh, she will be sending out the application, and I believe that will go out either today or tomorrow. You have four weeks to complete it. As far as requirements, if you're a second and third year dietary student, you do have to be excused from clinic by January 1st. So that does not mean you have to email your clinical director today, first get accepted as a mission. But the reason why we need to make sure that you can go on the mission is because as far as logistics, flights, 
um, we may have to rent a car to or a van to get to the location. We need to kind of know the bodies we're going to have, and we need to make sure it's for sure. Estimated cost would be great, of course, if we got sponsored, if it was free, being realistic. I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, the last two years, um, it's been about 300-ish per person. Ish. So usually you have to cover your flight. We always do Southwest, so you do get your money back if you can't go for any reason. Um, and normally the hotel we stay at like a really <laughs> hotel. Some have mattresses. Usually that the one we're looking at this year is thirty nine dollars a night, and that's split between two people. So make sure you are willing to travel outside of California. So if you are trying to go outside of California, that is our first goal. Uh, but if not, we do have other backup options in the California area. So just make sure you are willing to, to fly. Um, yeah, make sure you're okay flying. Uh, fundraising, so we do do fundraising events as a group. Um, for Podiatry, we always cover our attendees. We always pay for our attendees. They are great. They take time out of their spring break to come help us and teach us. So we always pay for our attendees. And we also try to cover as many meals as possible. So last year we covered every lunch for everybody. We had a ton of snacks. And some of the hotel was covered by the fundraising. And then, are there other SMU programs besides podiatry? This is Anyone else here from other programs? Uh, FNP, oh. NEPA, or PT, or OT? Okay. Okay, so, so, so we're more than, um, we'd love to have every program come, of course, but this year is something that is going to be a little bit different. Usually, it's only the podiatry students that plan, but this year we want a team leader from all the other programs, and you will be responsible for fundraising for your attendee, and you know, if we have to get rental cars for your rental car, we can be responsible for the time for you. So that's something a little bit differently that we're going to do. Okay. So myself and Lacey, we are the third year coordinators team leaders. Letty and Johan, they're the second year Dietary students were also helping us coordinate and lead. Uh, myself and Lacey were only on campus once a week every Thursday. They are on campus uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So if you're interested in going, the application will be sent out by Miss Erica Lewis. Check your email. It will probably be today. If not, it will be tomorrow. Here's your email. The deadline is October 23rd at 8 a.m. If you turn your application at 801, it will be automatically at the very end, and you will get the very end of the waitlist, and you probably will be going on the mission. So turn your application in on time. If not, stress up and please. And you have four weeks, so plenty, plenty of time. And even if you're not sure, I know it's hard, you don't know your schedule, you don't know what exams you have, you don't know what you're doing, still apply. Because if you can't go, that's okay, we can always fill your spot with somebody else who would yeah, okay, go. But we all also need to know that by January 1st. <laughs> yeah, one of the challenges, uh, especially when you get into clinic rotations, is you have to make sure you're cleared to go. And so let's say you have Highland third year, and we usually have about seven or eight students third year that come to Highland rotations. So if six of you want to go to the mission, it might be a little difficult. Um, so that's why we want to get the selection process going. But um, also, it's really important. If in doubt, apply. I think that's a good, uh, you know, really good idea. Just get it in. You can always pull it. Um, it's not like a signed contract that you're going because uh, we don't know how many people we're taking. Uh, the other thing is just to be clear: the selection process. The students do not select. Okay, they're just helping coordinate things. It's going to go through the faculty and the administrator. We'll make sure that. We're doing it depending on how many people apply. Will depend on what kind of selection process we have. You know, uh, I remember when I first started, we were lucky to get enough people to go, and then all of a sudden we had this. And when you had to do like a lottery, just to kind of make it fair, and then we started saying, well, what about the different classes? You know, making sure that the first, the second, third, fourth didn't go. So it's not a real simple thing. One of the things Andre and I will probably be working on is other opportunities for community outreach, so that. During your four years here, you get to go maybe on some away ones and some more local ones, but that's something we'll be working on because I think the community health aspect is really important. So I just want to throw that out there. Um, I know we had some disappointed students last year who, who couldn't go. Um, nothing against them. It wasn't that their applications were bad. It was just that we had to make some kind of selection, and we really let up a lot of people go last year. Our one concern is the more people that go, it might dilute the process too much. So we want to, you know, there, there's a balance there. Okay, so now, and I'm going to thank great group up here. Um, I've always enjoyed every year we go, it's always a great group. It's always a lot of fun. But I noticed there's several of you in here that have gone before. And if you wouldn't mind, we'll start at this table. If, if you want to just say a few brief comments about your experiences. Sorry, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Right, so um, it was really important to hear student experience, but if you have questions, this is 
Lacey Fimo and my email. This is Dr. Tricia Fimo. Please, please, please email myself or Lacey first. This is student Brianna. Lacey and I probably have more information than Dr. Tricia. We do have everything through him, but ask us first before you know exploding his email box. Are there any burning questions that you want to ask us? Anybody? We don't know how many people we are taking. Of course, we want to take everybody that applies, but unfortunately, we have to take a limited amount due to the fact we don't know how large the clinic is. You can't overcrowd a clinic. All that jazz. What are some of the locations you're looking at? So, um, uh, Henderson, Nevada, in the Las Vegas area. Um, we had a few conversations and phone calls. Uh, this, and nothing's for sure, nothing's on paper, nothing's in contract. Uh, giving a contract is very, very tricky. We are working on it. We are have talked about the stance about it. That's why myself and Lacey are going to fly there, meet the people, see where we're actually going so we can make sure we like it. Um, but that is one possible location. Portland, Oregon is another one. I've been working with the Central City concern there, potentially. Um, that underserved population that's there is a homeless population that is seen, and it's also patients without insurance. And they have um, podiatry residents that come every other week, and sometimes with holidays, they don't even come in that month. So it's a really deserving population up there. And then another uh, backup location that we're working with, a CSPM student who is now a first or second year resident down at the Tucson, Arizona residency program, and we're looking at um, an area down south on the border of Arizona. So. so aside from fundraising, people that are chosen to go is approximately 300 per person. That's my best guess. I went the, my last two years, I paid about 300 out of pocket. It would be great if it was free, but I'm just being realistic. We're poor students, and I'm not going to tell you it's free because I paid about 300 the last two years each time. So you will have to probably cover your flight. We do buy flights very, very early. As soon as we have something with our signature, we will buy our flights from Southwest. And as far as hotel, the hotel we are looking at is $39 a night if we do go to the Henderson location. So 39 divided by two people for two or three nights. So plus food. But like I said, we will try to get as many meals as we possibly can covered. We might be able to get transportation covered. Of course, we're going to try to get as much as we can covered. But it's a very um, sticky situation until we get a signature and a contract. So, but I'm just being as honest. I think. So, more questions? Do you have any idea of when you would have something nailed down? Or? Well, Megan's been working really hard the last four months on something, right. so it might not be the end of the month, it could be next month, but it's, I mean, That's you wouldn't believe how hard it is to get some people right. right back. Yeah. So, um, okay, okay, March 10th. <laughs> no, I mean, if you know me, I'm a planner. I plan as far as I possibly can. That's why we're flying there to go look at this to make sure it's something we actually want to do. Because, right. you know, of course, photos and email are can't really do justice. Um, so, as soon, I mean, as soon as we possibly know, we will let you guys know. But part of the reason is that we have to get a contract, and that contract is from here for yeah. CSPM and SMU. Um, whether we stay in state or go out of state, we still have to get a contract. Contracts are very, very messy. We've been working on it. As, we'll let you know. yeah, as soon as we get done, we'll let you know. The good part but, is you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, yeah. we'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But I promise there will be a medical mission, whether it is out of state or whether it is in California. There will be something. We have many, many backup options and plans. But like I said, we're trying to get a large space, a clinic, a clinic that already has established patients that don't have primary care. So we're trying to meet our goals before we do our backup plans. So. Yeah, a couple of challenges. Number one is the type of facility we're going to have in terms of have a contract. Also, we've got a state, we have licensure issues possibly, so, you know, that's the other thing. So, again, we're going to look at the most practical and most feasible for everybody. Um, and it usually encompasses about three days on your, your flight travel there and back and everything going on. We'll have some um, orientation meetings some different times we'll meet prior to, obviously. Uh, just so you're prepared, you know what to take and all that kind of stuff. So depending on where we go, will depend. Ideally, we'd like to make it so you don't have to bring any of your instruments. That would be fantastic. So if we can get into a clinic setup that has autoclaves and instruments, it's like that's great. That you know, because the more stuff that you're carrying around, you might lose it, whatever, and we don't want you to do that. Uh, but but the bottom line is, we want it to be a very beneficial experience for you with minimal financial impact. I mean, that's the key. So fundraising is so important in getting the right facility. I mean, ideally, this is my ideal facility, one that's going to transport us from the airport and come back, close, you know, close by, run us to clinics, um, possibly give us a break with some kind of housing and meals. 
So, I mean, those are all the ideal, maybe getting a couple corporate sponsors, big sponsors, who can really cut down so you're not doing 5,000 bake sales. You know, it depends on how much money you can make. So, again, we're looking at all kinds of ideas. Um, and, again, uh, over the years, we've had some pretty creative ideas for fundraising. So if you're interested, I highly, highly recommend you apply. It's a great, it's really a great time. I can't even tell you, you make so many friendships from older classmates, and, you know, it's three days of fun. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to do a lot. It's great as a first year and a second year, you know, even third and fourth year. I'll, I'll also add, um, the third year is just applied to all of our clerkship programs recently. And just something to kind of think about, um, when you're filling out that application, there's a spot on there that says, what have you done? Um, in your podiatric career, you know, whether it's volunteering or uh, workshops or whatnot. And, you know, you should really want to go on the mission because you want to serve uh, a deserving community. But I will tell you that there are some residency programs that actually also have medical missions. And this is a great talking point with those residency programs. Like, I went on a medical mission. I know what it takes to be a part of a group and, um, you know, a team. And I want to go to this program because we have the same goals and we have the same values. So, you know, just keep that in mind that this can continue um, throughout your career and uh, please apply. And if you're in the SMU Community Service Honor Society, the last two years it counted as 20 hours. This year, I, our trip may be one day longer, so you may get more than 20 hours, but just if you are in that society, it does count as 20 hours. So. Okay, comments yeah. from our past uh, participants. Okay, Ashley. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nicole. This is Ashley. Hi. We went since our first years. Um, so we went first and second year, and we're going to be applying this year. As first years, I think the biggest thing is that you, you get like the first clinical experience. So by the time you were in second year in clinic, you actually know more than most of your classmates. So when I started a clinical rotation, I felt more comfortable than I think the people who did go on this trip. And I know Dr. Ducha, he said that he's seen difference from competing with students who went and haven't went. So I think even even though it's like great experience, like you learn a lot more than I think you even realize in a three day span, because you're just with patients all day long, um, and it's great. The upperclassmen just you pretty much pair up with an upperclassman just from the beginning, you switch every day, and then they just pretty much like take you under the wing and they teach you things that you need to know, and they help you learn how to write a note. They help you like I first year I did nail abortion, and so then when I went to Highland and there, we had one as a case, they said which students done one, and I had done one, so I could do it again. So it kind of gets you exposed earlier, so you're kind of, you know, just a little ahead of the game. So I, I really liked it. It's a lot of teamwork, but the upper years let you do a lot. There's a lot of hands-on that you may not even get to do in clinic right away, so it's really fun. And they coordinated it last year into groups, and that was really helpful because we had, you know, we just had where you could go see patients, and then on your off times when you weren't seeing patients, you learned a lot, like the hand time. Yeah, so when you're, learning. when you're not with patients, you're actually being taught by the classroom things that you'll learn, that you have to have for interviews or things that you'll need. Oh, yeah, we went, we went through interview questions. Yeah, so yeah, it's pretty much just like a crash course and everything you need to know. Okay. We're done. Thank you. showing us everything which was so neat because like we don't really have we didn't have that exposure our first year and then um, like Jay said it really helps with clinic like going on the mission when we were at Highland in August and it was just like 
okay, we've seen a lot of these things before, so you're not super lost when you start your clinical rotations. So I thought it was amazing. Really good experience. <laughs> Any more questions? Any other comments from people? Yeah, I mean, I okay. Thank one, you all. One, one, thing, one thing I think Nicole said that, that again, those of you who have kind of heard me say, is that it really prepares you. When I see you at Highland Clinic and in the attending see you, you're much better prepared. You may not know that until you get there, but we really recognize that. I mean, I've seen from the first years coming in, and they're just, yeah, I see just, they're the second years at Highland. Many of them are comparable to the beginning third year clinically, and which I think is good. And it's not so much the volume you'll see at the mission, it's actually that intensity, so that we want to make sure you're not just, you know, re reading a book or watching a soap opera. When, when there's a lull, we do workshops, we work on things, we can improve your skills. But the most important thing for the podiatric program, by far, is being able to get to know those upperclassmen because they're going to be your residents, the residency you apply to. They've gone to the clerkships. They have experiences you want to talk to. It's always good to have friends in the field. What do you think? You don't want to burn any bridges. You want to network. And, and really having the FNP program is super important, too, because, again, when you get out of practice, uh, health care and medicine is a team approach. And it's so great to have them working with us. We learn a lot from them also, which, which I hope was evident. Um, you know, I think all our podiatry students at, at any level learn a lot from our FNP students. And it's a great, I think, interaction. Uh, it's something we need to do much more. That we encourage all of you. I think SMU is really growing in, in that way to do a lot more interdisciplinary stuff, um, not only in missions, but also curricular and extracurricular stuff. So. Again, it's very, very important. Uh, and again, I always love going because I love watching the students all get along. That's the thing is chemistry is really important. Um, honestly, we haven't really had any any problems because, you know, we hope everyone, if you have an ego, you leave it at the door, you just show up, have fun. Um, as practitioners, we like, you know, it's nice because we don't let you as a first year, second year, third year, fourth year, you're part of our team. And I, I, I think that's a nice change for a lot of people. You get there and you're not a first year, you're not a second year, you're not a third year, you're not a fourth year, but you're coming in and you're part of a team. And I think it's really important. Um, and then there's a cultural awareness and aspect I think is important. A lot of us don't speak real fluent Spanish, some, some of us do. That's helpful, but you learn a lot about the cultural barriers and possible barriers, language barriers, um, you know, different customs. Um, so I think it's very, very important to be exposed to that. But then the other thing is, what I've seen the last few years is more and more kids, which I think is great because I don't think our clinical training gives us enough pediatrics and especially photo peds. And so that's a really good thing to do because Highland, you're not going to get peds there. Why? They don't see kids that go to children's hospital, the Oakland's children. So we really don't get a lot of kids. And I think that's the one thing I've been impressed with the last few years is we're getting much more families and kids coming in. And we usually grab them if there's like, you know, a mother comes in for a foot problem, there's three or four little kids, and there's nothing wrong with them. You know, they're walking like really strange, but the parents don't really know there's anything wrong. Well, we try not to alarm them, but we'll look at them, we'll, we'll kind of educate them. Well, you know, watch your kids. They have some, some, some gay things going on here. So it's really, I think it's really a lot of fun. Dr. Prasad, uh, who has gone with us, Pretty much every year since I've been gone, um, she, that, that's her specialty, Koto so it's really fun to have her there when we have the kids there. So hopefully there's that uh, interaction. Anyway, so that was in a nutshell. We're all, we're all available um, if you need anything. Um, I'm usually here Monday, Thursday, Fridays on campus, so if you have questions. Um, again, I think the big thing is if you're really, really interested, I would recommend just go ahead and apply. You can always pull it if you need to. The problem is going to be we get a lot of people last minute, oh, I want to go, can I go? And obviously, whoever has the applications in, we're also going to look at the more selective we are. If there's people who have applied before and haven't been able to go, they're going to get some priority because really a goal is everybody should be able to go your four years here. That's why it's good to apply every year because if you don't happen to go, we want to make sure, and make sure you put that on your application. I think we should probably pick that up. but. You know, you can say this is your second or third time applying, and if you have been able to go, make sure that's on there somewhere just so we're, we're reminded of that, or, you know, come talk to us. Okay. Um, I want to thank our dynamic team here. Uh,